I heard you talk about another time that we, we had a discussion, Gemini, about the what happens to the families hmm. and um, people who are left behind, the, the non-incarcerated members of family. Could you talk a little bit about that? Cause that's, that's really powerful. To what I call it is uh, post-incarceration syndrome. And post-incarceration syndrome starts to affect children around at the age of five years old. These individuals see their mother, their brother, sister, cousin, or whoever uh, being harassed by police or going in and out of jail, out of prison. So they grow up thinking that their birthright is to either go to prison or end up in a grave. They don't grow up thinking that they want to be a psychologist. They want to be the next president. They want to be a doctor, anything. They don't grow up in that, in, in that mindset. And so when they turn 13, 14, 15 years old, right, they, they, don't fear, they don't fear the law. They don't fear the police because, for one, they don't love themselves. Secondly, no one has sat down with them to help them deal with the trauma that they're suffering from because their loved one is incarcerated. So the trauma, the induced trauma starts then. So how do we break it is the question. Well, we break it by trying to fix the justice system. You know what I'm saying? Because I always tell people that the justice system is working just how it's supposed to work. It's not broken. You know, people, oh, the justice system is so broken. We really need to fix the justice. No, it's not. The justice system is a machine that feeds off bodies who starts looking at these bodies at the age of third grade reading level. The minute that they figure out that they can't adequately read on a third grade reading mm-hmm. level, that's the next recruitment for this machine called the system. So if we really want to do something, we fix the machine early on by not allowing it to chew up all these young African-American bodies, his Latino bodies. I wanted to jump in on something you just said a second because I think it's so important, but I want to make sure that I heard it correctly and then people that are listening heard it correctly. So I hear you drawing a connection between education. Exactly. And systemic <sighs> justice-related issues. I don't know how to sum, that, sum up the other side of it, education. And, I mean, it's so interesting because my best friend works – diligently is an administrator in a it's a private school but it targets um poverty ridden areas Mm -hmm. looking at the idea that education is the key right education is the key to breaking this cycle um and so i hear about that all the time and so then to be speaking with an individual like yourself who is coming from the other direction and is also pointing a finger towards this this is where a lot of this system starts to break down I think is so huge for people to hear and pay attention to. Because I do, I think people point a finger at like the law or the justice system being the problem. We need to fix that. And there's a lot of really fancy people that are starting to have a voice to like what's wrong with our prison system, what's wrong with our prison system. But I think you have the firsthand experience and then and and knowledge and key components of the fact that this starts much younger in a different quote unquote system. I always say this. I I use this as a scenario, right? Say, for instance, you and I, Mm -hmm. our lives were reversed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You sitting in my seat, I'm sitting in your seat. Mm -hmm. If I grow up in a family of wealth, education, and just all things that make an individual succeed in life, right? Right? Because I believe right now, if they were to place drugs in the white communities right now, just dump it all in the white communities right now, right? And they started making money from it. Their lives become different and I I become you, you become me. I know for a fact that education plays a part because if I was going to private schools or if I had a family that come from college graduates historically, eventually I graduate from college. I know from what I know now and understand about who I am. I got a, I just told you I completed the eighth grade, literally. Do you know what you were doing in eighth grade? Your family was already setting your plan up for you for college. Right. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. That wasn't the case in my family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From the eighth grade, two years later, I was incarcerated. I was in prison. Mm -hmm. Two years later, two years from completing the eighth grade, I was already in prison. Four years after that, five years after that, or whatever it is, from the 10th grade to maybe till I was 20, 21, I was already setting myself up for almost a lifetime in prison. But if the roles were verse or different, I would know. I always look at myself, and I'm going to be successful one day because I believe in me, mm. first of all. I don't use it as, okay, I went to prison. I understand the obstacles that I face every day. I, for, I face 45,000 different obstacles having a felony conviction over my head. Those are the barriers that I face every day that the average person walking around on the street doesn't face. Like every day, you know, you can wake up, you're going to do this, you know, but every day I have to fight from the trauma that's dealt, that I deal with every day, whether I'm going to have a job, whether I'm going to be on the streets or not. I have to fight the demon of not going back to the streets. That's a demon within itself. 